Hey everybody, welcome back to your regular, regularly scheduled programming, which is me doing fragrance reviews. I've got a series lined up because I don't want to leave you guys hanging over the Christmas break. Also, I'm on the push for 3,000 subs. That's what I want to do. I want to do a push for 3,000 subs. It looks like I'm averaging like a thousand subscribers a year. It's slow and steady to say the least. It's okay because I do this for fun. I don't do this for subscribers. It's funny, isn't it? I do this for fun. I'll justify that to myself somehow. But I am on the push for three so that I can make my, I don't know, my average of a thousand subscribers a year. And so I'm doing seven days of seven fragrances. These days are not going to be consecutive. I will spread them out. But they will be seven videos which will have seven fragrances in each video. That means 49 fragrances, no repeats, that's the rule. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so so I can get to my goal of 3000, even if you have to create other accounts to do so. Let's get into it. So this first one, I'm going to kick off with seven Roger Parfums fragrances that I own. Roger being one of the nicest and uh, one of the most exclusive and uber niche, I would call them, fragrance houses. And you can definitely get climatized to how good some of these smell in terms of quality, in terms of presentation, in terms of just the way that they behave on your skin and the effort taken in terms of thought put into them. They're not all entirely unique, but they are probably the highest quality versions of that thing that you can relate to it with. Kicking off, let's go. Let's go with seven of these in no particular order. It's just seven Roger fragrances that, that I own. I own quite a bit more than this but um, I just chose seven at random. And those other fragrances that I own might come up in the uh, subsequent videos. So let's kick off and um, yeah, let's do this. Oh, where do I start? Let's start with, uh, let's start with a, well, they're all good. What do I start with? I'll start with this. I'll start with a Parfum Cologne, nice green bottle. This is Vetiver Parfum Cologne. It also comes in a Parfum concentration, which is double the price of this, but with half the quantity. So this is a 100 ml bottle. The parfums come in a 50 ml bottle, but cost twice as much as these. These are already quite expensive. They retail here in Australia for around $450 to $500, depending on where you go. You can get deals on them so that you can get them a bit cheaper than that. Vetiver being one of the ones that doesn't really get talked about as much as, say, Elysium does or Enigma does or even Danger, as a matter of fact. I think Scandal, Scandal is probably the one that's at the bottom of the list. And so is Vetiver. Vetiver's in there as well. To me, this is one of the most nicest Vetivers I've ever smelled in terms of... It, it is like the Guerlain Vetiver. It's like a Tom Ford kind of grey Vetiver Vetiver, but it's just a, a few steps above that. In terms of quality, in terms of how it acts, and in terms of how true it keeps itself to the actual vetiver note, there is a really a lot of smokiness going on in here. Once the top notes fade away, you're kind of left with this night and day sort of comparison with regards to uh, this particular interpretation of vetiver, which is supposed to be staying true to the actual plant itself, the fragrance, the plant where the fragrance comes from. That's the first one, vetiver. Uh, I should put these in a particular kind of order so I don't repeat them. I'll put that there. The next one coming up is Burlington 1819. A lovely crystal cap there. Um, yeah, I do like this one. This one actually took a little bit of a while to grow on me. By a bit of a while, I mean probably three wearings. I did get it when... Uh, it was starting to heat up and this is a lovely sort of very realistic long lasting citrus fragrance with a bit of a stanky kick of cumin which i like it's not stanky it's just cumin it's very well done cumin can be a little bit pungent but this is extremely well done um one of probably one of the best in terms of bang for buck rogers you can buy is this one because the performance is really magnificent especially for a citrus 
not so freshy, but a citrus deepy, a deepy citrus, a deep citrus. That's what it is. Rogers Burlington, 1819. I think it's great because you do get a hundred mil bottle. You get the crystal cap uh, and it's not so much more expensive than the Parfum Cologne line. So best bang for buck. Uh, speaking of bang for buck, the next bang for buck is going to be this one, uh, Oceania, which for the longest time was on my radar. This is actually a blind buy for me. I hadn't smelt it before I got it. Um, and this, again, took a, a little bit of a while to really resonate with me until I thought, yes, I do really, really like it. And for a while there, I had a really good honeymoon period with it until, until um, I smelled other Rogers and especially things that are in the Pierre de Valet collection, which are like another step above uh, the regular perfumes or parfums that he's creating. Um, and I find this a little bit sweet now, a little bit too sweet now. But sometimes, depending on the weather and where I'm going to be, this is probably the most ideal sort of scent. It's like this combination between um, being at the beach, but not at the beach, but kind of like in a garden uh, that's near the beach. You can get the salty sea breeze, but you've also got like a citrus garden with some musks and laundry coming in, uh, like a breeze from like freshly laundered sheets or something coming in. So yeah, that's Oceania, knocking things left, right and center here. Okay, now we're getting to another one. I think, um, yeah, now we're getting to another one. This one I love from the first moment that I smelled it. It was a uh, midsummer dream. Uh, and this is i don't know i don't know how to describe this because if you haven't smelled something like davana which is like the main note that's in here it's really hard to describe it's not a it's not a fougere fougere like you don't you haven't smelled this one that's that's all i can say about that unless you've smelled uh pierre de valet 20 Pierre de Valet 23 or 25. I can't remember which one this actually smells like, uh, but it smells very, very similar to that. But the dry down of that one gets a little bit like pungent. There's like a note in there in the dry down that doesn't agree with me. Um, and that one is slightly sweeter than this. This one I feel like is a bit more dry and this one's a bit more in your face. Uh, but that one is the Pierre de Velle is more refined. I have to say that um, even more refined than this, even though this is no slouch in and of itself. This does last for quite a while as well. I find that this is a really good springtime fragrance. Um, if you haven't got your nose onto it, please do try it. it. I don't think it's for everybody. It's not a typical scent, but to me, it just smells fantastic. It works really great off my skin as well. Midsummer Dream, named after that Shakespeare play. Uh, the next one is probably the only one that I don't actually have a full full bottle of, and that's probably a, a good thing. I don't know, uh, but I have used up half of my 7.5 mil travel atomizer. And if you can read this, it's actually it's actually come off. But um, I don't know if you can read that. But this is Hot Lux from the actually it's not Hot Lux. That's not the name of the fragrance. The name of the fragrance is just simply Roger. Roger's the name of the fragrance. It's from the Hot Lux line, of which there are three fragrances. And this is named after Roger. And this is apparently Roger's daily driver. That's, this is what he wears. And if you, if you meet him, this is, this is what he smells like. He smells great. That's all I can say. This smells phenomenal. This is extremely well done. It's an extremely high quality, well done homage to the past, told to you in 8K full high definition, but with a sepia tone. That's probably the best way I can describe it. You'll smell this and you'll go, oh, I, I've smelled something like this on elegant women of the past or walking through perfume. If you're older than like, you know, 40, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you're too young, you might not, <laughs> or you might, it might remind you of your grandma or something like that. But yeah, super good. Quite long lasting as well. As with like most Rogers, you get like that initial burst of projection, but then they all kind of, most of them kind of just sit close to your skin because that's how, a, that's how, that's the ethos I think of, of what he's trying to go for. Not that I know, not that I've asked him, but that's what I think he's trying to go for because projecting all the time too much is not really all that classy or elegant or gentlemanly. So that's why 
we want to have like a smaller scent cloud around us. Moving on, but before we move on, I need to take a sip of good old coffee. Love it. Next is, oh, actually the second last one. Okay, is my first purple cap. This is uh, RDHP 15, Roger Dove Haute Perfumery, Haute Perfumery 15 to, I guess, uh, celebrate their 15th anniversary of having their um, perfumery up above um, Harrods, I believe. And this is quite pricey, but um, very, very worthwhile. I think it's kind of similar to Hot Lux, to Roger. It's probably a more wearable version in that it's a more uh, thinner, which is that feels more viscous. This feels more thinner, like it's got more projection and things like that in it. But by all means, it is, it is, it is, it is a fragrance that stands on its own next to anything. The peach in this one, there's a peach note in here, which is just, you would think peach would be like for, for women, for old ladies, but this is just done just right. It's on that cusp, right? So like, I can't, like, I can't get enough of it. Look at this. <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous. Mm, I'm, I like to lather myself in this sometimes uh, when I do wear it. Sometimes I just I keep this on my desk and I just pull it out of the box and I just like smell it like I just did then. I just can't get enough of it. It's fantastic. In terms of the purple caps that I've smelled, I got to give it to um, RDHP 15. Yeah, I've smelled... Um, what have I smelled of the purple caps? The old Lux that I've got. Great Britain. I've smelled Great Britain as well. I didn't like that. Sorry, not my thing. Anyway, last but not least, I just dropped a bombshell. Anyway, last but not least, um, I have one of probably the least talked about of all the Rogers. Uh, this probably because it's um, oh, a discontinued one. It's an old one. It's a good one. It's called uh, Loscar. Loscar, named after the Loscar um, Hotel that's in London. And uh, he made a fragrance for them. And this is the Pour Homme. I think there was a Pour Femme for women as well. Lovely. It's like a grapefruit, creamy sort of grapefruit kind of thing going on here. Very, very elegant. Like this is one I put on the other day when I was just at home. I was working from home and I was like, ah, I, want to, I want to put on a fragrance. I want to put this on. And I was just wearing a t-shirt and I put that on and I went, I feel underdressed for this scent. I do. I, I think I think I need to put on a proper shirt, even though I'm at home and nobody else is here. That's how ridiculous I am. That's how ridiculous this is. Phenomenal scent. And I did send a decant of this to uh, someone who had never smelled it and they wanted the bottle and they offered me ridiculous money for it. I refused and uh, because I also like it and I don't have all that much left and when this thing runs out there's a, no hope in hell that I'll be able to replace this so I'm not giving it up Oscar and that is seven that's seven phenomenally good Roger scents that you don't often actually um, hear talked about a few of them especially the Oscar anyway that concludes day one if you haven't subscribed subscribe uh, and get me to 3k let's go